So welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, this is going to be part three of the beginner chess lessons videos. Um, we're going to start off at a rating about 850, 850 and go to about 900. Um, so in this video I'm going to be talking about chess fundamentals um, and as I'm going through games I'm going to talk about what I'm thinking, I'm going to talk about what I can suspect my opponent is thinking, I'm going to talk about the position on the board, if one player is better, if someone's controlling the center, or even general things that I think might just be insightful for players that are looking to learn. So with that, I'm going to start the first game. Okay, so we have the white pieces. I'm going to play pawn to e4. So we're going to look at our own putting principles. We're going to attack the center like both of us are doing there. We're going to de develop our minor pieces, our bishops and our knights. Um, and we're going to prepare to castle. So get the pieces out of the way of the king and the rook. Um, if we want to castle king side, get nothing between them and then put the king in a knife safe position. Uh, so he played c5. I'm going to play knight f3. And we're going to get our bishop out as well. Okay, so we'll take that. Now he's going to have stacked pawns. One of those two directions. Um, stacked pawns are generally not good for you. Because they're a little, a little less effective because they can't work together as well. So we've already castled and we're going to push the center in a minute. If we can get control of the center, we're going to be in a a very good position here. So we're going to look uh, to get these two pieces developed very soon. So he's going to try to pin um, that that knight to our, our queen there. So we'll see if we can put some pressure on him. And we'll uh, develop and attack the center a bit more with these pawns. Okay, we'll trade pawns here. They're going to play queen up to here. So now we can move that knight out of the way, and the queen is no longer pinned. So when we look, he has nothing developed on his king side, which is definitely going to hurt him uh, very soon. Okay, so he played knight there. I think we can push that pawn, put some pressure on him. So we're probably going to trade pawns. And he can't go here. To get out of the way, he can't go there, he can't go there. Oh, he can go there now, but that's okay. It's not really leaning anywhere for him. And we'll develop that knight if he wants to trade. We'll go for that. Because this pawn will move towards the center, and again, we want to get that control, especially because he's not developed over here. He's going to have at least two moves to get that bishop developed, meaning one being either of those pawns that he can move out of the way, and the next to be to move that bishop. So he's attacking our queen. Uh, but it's not going to lead anything to anything. So I'm going to put the queen here in a position where I'm attacking the bishop. You can play here. You can kind of target this rook here a little bit if he moves the knight thereafter. Um, but I'll let that happen. So he's attacking our queen. We can go here, we can go here. Why don't we go here? And soon we're going to want to trade off these pawns. This is getting a little bit complicated, so we have to be patient. We have to see what moves benefit us. What moves benefit him. So normally we don't want to trade um, a bishop for a knight, but I think we would end up putting up more of a fight if we tried to protect that knight, I'm sorry, that rook. So we're going to let him take that. And we're going to continue to attack here. So he is up with a little bit of material, but I'm very happy with the position we have. Okay. So we're going to try to target that bishop and get it off. And this f7 square is going to be very weak for him. So we can play a knight here. We can play a knight there. So again, he's up a little bit of material here. But I like our position a lot more. So normally I would put that rook there and try to stare at the queen. But obviously with that move there, 
that bishop there we can't so he's going to be forced to go back unless he wants to trade but it wouldn't be a very smart move for him and again the queen is still eyeing that f7 square um, so if that bishop ever gets out of the way he's in a lot of trouble right now we would be threatening checkmate if he took there that's an interesting move so let's think about it take oh, takes takes let me take back. I think it's creative, but I'm not sure it's what we want to do. No. Let's take. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so now I have to decide how we want to take here. I'll take with the bishop, and now we'll look to move that rook over here. We can also get a, if we can get the queen to that square there, we can get a nice check. So he's trying to get a little bit of space. We'll move that rook over. We'll make his queen move around a little bit. He could play something like queen here and force a queen trade. That would be a good move for him. I'd be forced to take back because he's checking me and attacking my queen. But this is where that uh, that worst position of his with the unprotected king is starting to really affect him. So I think that would be his best move here. Um, but usually players around this 800 skill level, 850, are probably not going to be thinking that far uh, ahead or a move that it's a little bit more of a subtle move. Okay, so here's a sneaky good move. This is what we call a double attack. I'm going to put the queen there. Um, and what it's going to be doing, I'll attack the rook. I'm also threatening that check there, which I believe will lead to checkmate very quickly. So he can take that pawn, oh, he can take the pawn here. He'll be threatening the, the knight, but I don't think, uh, one, it's not a problem because the bishop's protecting it, um, so it's kind of shallow. He can't attack that pawn there, so I think he's just in trouble now. Okay. So how do we want to play this? We want to find a finishing blow here, but I don't know. I'll see it right away. Okay, let's trade off rooks here. So we would love to play that there, but we can't get away with it. So let's bring some more attacking pieces. He can check us there. We can go up, and then I don't see a follow-up from him, so that would be safe still. But our opponent is playing fairly well. So he can't, you know, play something like that to check us. Obviously, we can take back. So I do see Bishop check there. If he wants to take the back with his queen, more than welcome to. I would welcome that exchange very happily. So this is a strong position for me. That's protecting this. This is protecting that. Okay, so we'll check him here. I think we're getting very close to checkmate. So he's going to be on the run for a second here, and we just have to uh, finish him off. So beautiful tactic here. Oh, we're pinned. That's right. So that's not going to work. Okay, let's check him one more time. There we go. So we're now protecting that knight again. There we go. Okay, what we were trying to do before is that. 
So now we're attacking both the king and the queen. And how do we want to take here? Take. Everything is still protected. So I, I joke around and I say that chess is a team sport, but it really is because you want to make all your pieces play together as a team. And that's exactly what we're doing there. We're trying to make sure everything's protected and still attack him at the same time. So I did that a little quicker, uh, quicker than you know, beginner level player would do, but those are the principles that we really need to follow. So good game to my opponent. Uh, played really well for that rating level. Um, I would hope that most people aren't going to play that strong for this rating, but makes it a little more fun to watch. So he played e4. I'm going to play c5. We're going to attack the center and kind of fight a little bit there. I'm going to play e6. Uh, the normal move is, yep, d4 there. So I'm going to take back with the pawn. I'm going to play uh, knight f6. So here's a little trick. I'm hoping he does that. So when we have little tricks, we call them tactics. Um, they're usually a move or two that you put together, and it'll be a kind of a string of moves that uh, lead to winning a piece or even a checkmate, really a better position for you. So one thing I have to look out for here, um, if I were to play a normal move, he would be able to put the pawn forward, and I wouldn't be able to move the knight out of the way, or else he would be able to take my queen. So I see that immediately, and I move the, the bishop there. So now if he plays pawn forward here, I can just move the knight out of the way. So it's just things like that that you always have to keep an eye on. So we're going to attack the center a bit more. If he wants to trade knights, we can. We'll take back with the pawn. And we'll try to get this bishop out of the way, because that one can be a little pesky. Okay. And I'm okay with what he did there. So he doesn't want to trade bishops. Sorry, bishop for the knight, I should say. All right, so let's get him to trade some stuff off here, because he's putting a lot of pressure on. Okay, so we'll put some pressure there. I can move the knight back. And we'll develop our bishop, and we're going to get rid of the castle next. So still putting a lot of pressure on, but I don't think it's anything problematic here. So we'll castle. I'm going to move the queen off the back rank next. We're going to put some extra pressure on this knight here. But right now he only has that one piece protecting him. So he's being patient, and we're, we're doing a good job battling here in the center. So he might play pawn here. Yep, it's a good move. So he can take. I will take back with the knight. And he could actually win a piece here. He's playing really well. If he takes, I have to take back. Because or else he's threatening my queen. Yep. And now he has a free bishop. Well done by him. Okay. But we have a nice hold in the center, so I'm not too concerned. 800 level players, they're, uh, they're knowing their stuff these days. So we're going to put some pressure, and we're going to trap that bishop here. So we're going to win some stuff back. So as soon as he moves that back, yep, now he's trapped. So got to see a little vision there and realize he has those two pieces next to each other. Okay, so he just took, but we'll go back and take a look at that quickly. So I'm always looking at the follow-up. I say, well, if I play this move here and he moves back, then I can put that one here, and it's trapped. So I know people make the, the references to chess all the time where you know you always got to think ahead, but there are times where it, it is truly meant. So one thing I'm looking at here, I often think of bishops kind of like a sniper. And when I say that is they can attack from a really far distance. So th having this long diagonal for my bishop here, I'm staring at his king, and that's really powerful. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my queen uh, across from there, and I'm going to see if he recognizes that. Because if not, I'm going to win a piece next turn. And how I'm going to do that, I'm going to put that pawn forward. So I'm now going to be attacking that bishop and the checkmating square. So you're going to want to use the queen a lot, and he recognized it there, so good for him. Um, the queen is probably going to be the piece that will be used most for checkmating, because it can attack so many different ways. 
And checkmating can be one of the biggest challenges for newer players because you always have to have pieces protected um, and kind of working together. So it's it can be challenging. Okay, so he took the pawn there and he's threatening our bishop. So let's decide how we want to continue forward. What I can do is just move the bishop back. That way it's always going to be protected by one of these two uh, rooks here. And we're okay to give up those pawns because we're attacking the center. So we're going to go after his king a little bit here. So I'm going to push this h-pawn here. Try to get him to exchange some stuff. And he obviously can't move out of the way um, because the pawn is going to be pinned. Okay. So we don't want to move it more forward further because he can take back with the queen there. So I'm trying to decide how we should approach this. Alright, let's fish around a little bit and find a good attack here. And that was a mistake by him. So he just gave us a free rook there. I'm not totally sure why. So sometimes with players at this rating level, uh, you have to be patient because they will make mistakes. And when you play fundamentally sound, you can capitalize on those. It's that simple. OK, so he's attacking our bishop. How do we want to proceed? So we'll stick to our fundamentals. We'll go back and we'll allow him to trade bishops if that's what he wants. And now we look at the count towards uh, approaching the end game. So he has these three pawns that are going to be powerful and working together. But at the same time, we have a rook to his pawns. So that is much more powerful. Now that was a great move that I played there because this uh, bishop is pinned. So one good way to get out of a pin, if you have a check, but our king currently does not have any checks that he can do. There's no way for him to move his queen to put it into check. So we're going to try to attack this bishop. So he can play here. Or he can just give up the bishop, which is not the best move. So he thinks he has that check, which I was about to say. But you always have to look out. Uh, for kind of diagonal pieces such as the queen or the bishop moving backwards because this queen is staring down his queen. So either he missed that or he thought he was going to, I was going to miss it. But um, good game to my opponent. Again, played well, but made that mistake while losing the rook. And we move forward here. So good competition at this level, uh, surprisingly, but you know, playing fundamentally sound. So game three here, uh, e4, e5, and we'll play knight f3. So kind of sticking to the same opening here. Don't need to make anything too complicated. I'm going to play uh, bishop c4 there. And again, when I'm referencing um, coordinates there, we have the numbers on this side of the board. We have the letters down below here. So if it's easy to follow, you can do that. And we'll castle. Get nice and safe early. He may look to play bishop there and get that pin. So let's say one we saw last game. If he does, then I'll put that bishop back. Um, don't recommend that move. So now he's going to have those stacked pawns in the center. If you want, if you do have stacked pawns, you probably want to be in them in the center because they'll attack more center squares, but I still wouldn't call them too good overall. Okay. So he is going to attack that pawn there. We're going to move that rook over to protect it. And I think next we'll play d4, pawn to d4. And we'll get some exchanges there. I see what he's doing. Okay. So he's trying to attack this uh, f2 square. So we'll move the rook back. If he wants to trade two pieces for the rook and the pawn. We'll do that. I'm not against that trade at all. And he wants to. So it'll end up even, but it's usually a little bit better trading the, the two pieces for a rook and a pawn if you're the one uh, getting two pieces for it. So our, we have to look out because that knight is pinned. So the first thing we're going to do is move the knight out of the way. And a little bit of a closed game here, meaning that uh, the center is closed off. So I still have to develop these two pieces, but I need to open up the center a little bit in order to do that. So I'm going to play that pawn to d4 like we talked about earlier. Uh, if we do some trading, it'll give us space to open the rook up. Okay, so one thing to keep an eye on here, 
Um, if he were to take, I can't take back with the pawn. So I need to keep the queen here to protect that knight. So if he takes with the rook, I can take it back. So I'm going to develop that bishop. And that knight will be next. So another piece there to protect this knight. After that. So he can take that there. Might take with the pawn, I'll take back. And we'll attack his queen here. Which I'm gonna move it away. So he's trying to get that knight to the center where it'll be a bit more powerful. But our pawns are doing a good job, so he can't take there. Obviously, that pawn's protecting. He can't move it there. And we're going to put the knight, the, I'm sorry, the, the rook here. Protect that pawn. And the rook is going to be protected by the knight. So again, we're playing a team sport here. We want everybody to work together. And we're going to trade off in the center. We're going to have to move that rook because it's not too... Um, if anything happens to that knight, we're going to be in trouble. So I'm okay giving up these pawns, especially in this type of game. So now if he takes, I can take back with the knight and we're only going to end up trading queens, which is okay. Now one option I have here is to take that pawn there. He can move his pawn up um, to block my bishop in, but his king is going to be really opened up. And I'm going to have access to this square here and put him in check. Hmm. Interesting move. It's obviously attacking the rook here. I'll just put it here. So again, everything working together, and he's kind of fishing around. Um, he doesn't really have a concrete attack. I don't have anything to really go after the queen right now, but uh, I don't see this going too far for him. I think I could just move the queen out of here, really. I don't see him really threatening to take anything. So again, I want to attack that square there. I want to attack here. I want to get after his king. He's going to you know, sit there fishing around at my pieces, but I want to go after the king and win the game. Okay, so first we're going to do that. Now the queen is still protecting that pawn there. Although we would trade if he wanted to. Okay, so he didn't see this here. He has to block there. I'm sorry, block here. It's the only way he doesn't get checkmated because he can't access that square anymore. So let's get this knight involved. We're attacking the queen. Let's find a good attack here. Okay, so that's protected right now. Is there a good way to attack? There should be something here. Let's think. I want to move that knight over. We would trade. And then that would be pinned. We can go up. We'll get that knight. Check. Let's see if we can go back. We can play rook over here, but that's still there. What if we do this? He takes, we go here, and we have the rook attacking. So we really went a pawn in that sequence there. He doesn't take. Not totally sure why. I don't know if he just spots danger. Um, well, there is danger, so that could be a reason. So we'll take that pawn now. So sometimes people, when you attack, won't take the piece you attack with, even if it is something that you're sacrificing, because they might recognize it'll lead to kind of a worse position for them, which this definitely is here for him. Um, we'll give him another chance to take it. 
And I don't know if he's looking for a draw. Okay, I'll just go and take this here. So he can take that now. But this is definitely a little more complicated than uh, a lot of games at this skill level, for sure. So I still don't know why he's taking it. This is a beginner mistake, and totally because he hung his queen. Oh, so he can take back. And at this point, I am completely winning in this position. It's just more of figuring out how to win, not you know, it's when, not if type of situation. So we're going to skewer these two. Skewer uh, is the term, meaning I'm attacking two pieces. Even if he moved one out of the way, I'd still be attacking the other. So we want to take one of those bishops. We, I'm sorry, one of those rooks. We have queen there. Check. Um, he would have. He can't go there because the the knight is protecting. So he's trading, which is okay. More than happy looking at the material that we have on the board. We also have knight check that would win that rook. Um, and I think he may have resigned. So we're doing well so far. We want to keep this uh, this winning going. And same tactic. The knight is attacking both the king and the rook very powerful. Um, it's a little bit awkward to recognize, but it's a lot of pattern recognition. When you get used to it, uh, it's, it's easy to spot, and it's a very powerful tactic. So we want to try to get rid of these pawns here. Oh, well, we can't move that way, but we want to get rid of one, two, three. So we can get rid of one. Next move, we'll get rid of a second one. And the only thing we have to look out here uh, for here is stalemate, meaning uh, we trap him in a position where he can't move. And instead of getting a win, it'll be a draw. But this is a game that we clearly should win, so that would be uh, not a good result for us. I'll put it that way. So if I take that pawn, good example, that would be a stalemate. And if I don't move, it would be a stalemate. To be very careful. You always have to say, well, where can he move? Like right now, he can go here, here, here. We always have to make sure he has a square to move to. So instead of playing this game here, I'm going to move one of these pawns all the way up the board. Oh, in a moment, I will be, I should say. Okay, now I'll start. We're both running a little bit low on time. Um, I know exactly what I'm going to do, so it's I'm not too worried about running out of time. The only thing I have to look out for is if he were to play that pawn back, he would be threatening. Yep, yeah, okay, so now we're safe. So these two pieces are protecting each other. There's no way he can take either of them. That pawn can't go anywhere, so he is what's called the Zugzwang, meaning he has to really move back and forth, and he's kind of playing my game. So I'm going to pre-move, and you see that red, that means pre-move, means I'm selecting my move before he even goes. But if I know I'm in no danger, it's okay to do so. So good game to my opponent. Again, we're seeing some uh, some good matches here, um, but some mistakes clearly are giving me the victories. So he's starting out with c5. We haven't seen that yet. I'm going to play knight f6 here, and I'm going to still follow those opening principles. Um, and this is kind of a, a queen's pawn type of opening that's pretty common. We're following these opening principles. We're trading in the center there. And next, I want to get this bishop developed. Um, look at these two pieces de to develop soon. So it's OK. That pawn is protected by the knight still. And so what would happen is if he takes, I take back the queen, that pawn would be hanging. So even though um, he's pulling my attention over here, I still need to see what the effects would be two or three moves ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and protect that pawn in the center. He's going to attack it. And I'm going to threaten that. So he can go here and win the piece, but I'll win a piece back. OK. So whichever piece he takes, I'll take back uh, with the queen here. And we're going to be even. I think that's the better move, because he can take here now. So we're going to be even. Um, we'll have to be a little bit careful. We don't want to castle just yet, because he'll be able to put his queen over there. It is protected with the knight right now, but we're giving him kind of a attacking chances. So we'll put the bishop there. We'll attack the queen, protected by the knight. 
And with that, it develops the bishop. So I know I'm not going to win his queen here unless he makes an awful mistake. Uh, but it's really the development part of that is what I'm looking at. So I'm going to take... Am I going to take? I'm not going to take. I'm going to protect that further. Because if I took, he would take back... Oh, if I took, he would take back with the queen. I would be in check, and I wouldn't have a good square to move to. And I, so I kind of want to avoid that. So if he takes here, if he takes here, I want to take back with a knight, because then the two of them are threatening that f2 square. Very, very powerful to attack. Just like this. Um, so he has to dodge that threat, and he's also being attacked here. So I'm attacking two really powerful squares. One piece, one square, I should say. But he's going to have to come up with a really creative defense to get away with that. OK, so this is what I was a little bit concerned with earlier. But I think we're okay just putting the king there. Now next move, he has to look out because we can win his queen. If we put the rook there and he doesn't move his queen out of the way, um, he's going to have the queen pinned to his king. And I'll have to block, put a piece in the way, but I could take a piece there, I could take a piece there. Um, it looks like really any combination I would be able to take. So he's threatening our queen. I'm going to take this pawn, and that threat is still there. He can't take the knight, so he really has to move that queen. Or he could castle. That works for him. So I'm looking for an attack here, because that's a really bad place to have that knight. So although my king is a little bit in the open, uh, once I get this knight developed, which I'm going to do now, uh, we can move these rooks over, and there's not a whole lot of places to attack. So, here's a good example. We can trade some stuff off here. So he's going to have to move his king, or his queen out of the way here. No, he doesn't have to, I guess. If he wants to trade, then he can, but it wouldn't be wise for him. Okay. I'm not going to trade because that would actually be a little bit better for him. So he's also attacking that pawn there. So we're going to move the knight back to protect it. Um, we're okay with him trading because if, if we trade here, then we still own this. Own, the, own that diagonal, which is really important. If we did that, then he would own the diagonal because he'd have the piece that's already there. So we have to be patient here. Um, another kind of game that will be drawn out towards an end game. But we're going to play fundamentally sound, and we're going to get the win. I feel confident. So we have to be careful moving. We're going to have to put the queen, I'm sorry, the king back here. Get out of the way there, because we want to protect that pawn. If we ever move that knight out of the way, um, he'll be able to take and put us in check, which we want to avoid. We also, you want to keep the knights off of the edge of the board like I have here. So we'll probably want to play knight to there or there soon. Uh, but this square here, this uh, c5, is a little more centered, which is ideal. No, nope. see, I need to pay attention more. Um, a beginner mistake, he hung the knight there. So I can take back, and he can't take my queen. So it's, uh, that's how patience pays off. Now we're going to play a little trick next move. We'll see if we can get away with it. Okay, he checks us, and again, something you see from beginners, there's a lot of checking without really a follow-up. He can check again here, I can move back, he can check again, he can check again here, and I'm going to put myself right in the corner to tuck him away, and uh, have nothing to worry about there. Nice and safe. You can get a little campfire going, throw some s'mores, watch a movie, nobody's messing with him. Let's try something fun here. I'm going to throw the rook right at him. Let's see if he takes it. If he takes it, I take back with the queen and it's checkmate immediately. So he'll have to protect with the queen somehow. That doesn't work because I can take it, obviously. He might be in trouble here. He obviously can't do queen check there. I have to be very careful of him uh, attacking my back rank here, but obviously the immediate threat is just that. 
he has to take. If I take back with the take the rook, he takes back with his king. I don't know if I checkmate him because he can go here. Let's try it. Oh, he didn't take it. Very interesting. Okay. Now, can I force a trade of queens? That would be uh, just a win here. Okay, so what I'm going to do to try to force that. So I'm going to protect that file there. Next move, I would put my queen to there. So he'd pin it, and we'd be forced to trade. So he'll take it, and I'll take back with the rook. And we're in a much better position, so that is in our, our favor there. All right, so let's see if we can get a an attack going anywhere here, even though he moved the queen out of the way. He can block. I don't see anything immediate. What he's trying to do is put the queen there. So because of that, he's going to move that pawn up, he's going to check me, and I can run away safely. What do not even call it run away? We'll say, uh, go for a walk. A nice protected walk. But what we're looking to do... Oh, now we have this knight that's just hanging out, and he's going to resign. He's going to realize there's no way to really attack successfully, and we're going to move on to the next game. Good game to my opponent there. So going to start off nice and simple, pawn to e4, something we've seen plenty of times here. Um, e4, e5, it's a knight f3, he played e6, and we'll play bishop c4. This isn't something I play in all of my games, but for sake of uh, fundamentals, we're going to do it. I'm going to look to trade pawn, uh, exchange pawns. I might take with my queen. Okay, I think we saw this earlier in the first video. What, How this can go downhill very quickly. So now he can't castle. He has to take back with the queen. And actually... Did I have... No, I had a trick, but it may not have worked. Okay. Now we take this pawn here, we're up a pawn, and he's going to have to stop us there somehow. I don't even know if he has a way to, but just a quick example of being careful what you exchange in the opening, how you exchange it, so this is not going to help him. So we're going to take, he's going to take back with the pawn, and we still have that check there. We're going to take that rook, and hopefully we can take the knight and run away safely. But even if we don't, exchanging that rook for the knight is very good. Now we're threatening... Bishop. So he's trying to do the same thing, but it won't work the same way. Mm. We'll think ahead a little bit here. So what I'm thinking is I need to protect this pawn. I see a number of ways to do it. Let's see, first off, playing that bishop there. Second off, I see knight check probably play king there, and then knight back to here, so it's protecting and threatening. So I'm actually going to go with that. And normally when you threaten the king, you want to keep the king out of the center, um, but in this position you, you often want to chase kind of the piece that's checking you, especially when it's a knight and it's nice and close to you. So you got a couple options there. Now we're going to move that pawn forward. So he's kind of doing some hollow attacking here. There's no real follow-ups, and it's not going to lead to anything for him. But the benefit for me is by making those moves, I'm also kind of uh, I'm developing my position too. So it's definitely benefiting me. The last thing I want to do is develop that knight. And he's resigned. He sees his down material, and he's not going to be able to materialize an attack. So good game to my opponent. Um, easy mistakes to recognize in the opening and exploit. So we're going to play one more game here and uh, finish up the video. So hoping this is being very instructive. Uh, opponent opens with d4. We're going to play pawn to d5. Opening principles, once again, attacking the center, developing our minor pieces, especially on the king side, and looking to castle early. Okay. So he's attacking this pawn here. I have one knight defending it, but we'll also put the pawn to defend it. Um, similar to last game, he's going to attack here. He's going to try to go for that square there. Um, he's using a little team attack, having these two, excuse me, these two together. But I'm going to throw that bishop in the way. He can take it. I'll take the doubled pawns. Uh, it's not the end of the world. It's not preferred, but it's not bad. So now he has moved over to the 
the knight, and this is an opening principle I believe we've mentioned before. You should want to try to avoid moving a piece twice in the opening. Although I do not like this pin um, that he has here on my queen. So quickly, let's see if we can break it. Okay, I don't know what that did. And he's moved a bunch of stuff. Um, and he has one, two locked up, and he moved that one now. But my development is definitely a bit better. If you want to have stacked pawns, I said it a few games ago, you want them to be in the center because at least you can kind of use them to trade off and hold on to uh, more squares there. So we're going to look to do that in a brief moment. So we have this bishop, and the big question is where do we develop it? Do we develop it here? I think we do. Put it on that long diagonal, or do we put it under here? I put it on that long diagonal in a perfect timing to protect the knight that he's attacking. Okay. So he's really coming after that knight there. So he has one, two attackers. I have one defender. So what do we need? We need more defenders. And we'll bring the rook over. So we, we're getting attacked. We don't need to have a meltdown. We don't need to freak out. We just defend. We're going to try to open up the center a little bit. So this is what we call a closed position. Uh, what that means is there's not open files here. Not open files. These are closed. There's a pawn in the way of all of them, or each of them, I should say. Okay, so he's attacking the pawn here. We need to decide how we want to protect it, or if we want to protect it at all. But I think we do. I think we're best off just putting the other rook there. And... He can win this pawn, and I can live with that. Okay, let's see how we want to proceed here. Let's do a little trick here. So, in an earlier game, we already saw the attacking power of the bishop here. Now, I'm going to do a little sneak attack here. If he doesn't, if he allows me to. I'm going to play pawn there next. I'm going to try to take that knight. Nope, and he didn't allow me to. Okay. So he took a pawn. We're going for... I should play a little more fundamentally sound here. I was going for attacks more than uh, I should have. Am I getting checkmated? I wasn't paying attention. This is why we need to pay attention and do less talking, but I think we're fine. Let's so play there. Check. Up. And then we're okay. I don't love it, but we're okay. I can take back. Now... So he's better here because uh, I was trying to be sneaky and I was doing a bit too much talking, but we'll survive. Okay, so he missed the fact that I can take there. And after we exchange, he'll be up a few pawns, but I will have two rooks to the two I'm sorry, two rooks in the bishop to the two rooks. So Normally we want to keep the king a little out of the center, but I might try to centralize the king a little more here because we're approaching kind of end game, uh, end game status here. Okay, so we have to be careful here and we have to be patient, but definitely gonna definitely gonna find a way to win this. So we can take this. He's leaving a pawn hanging. So we want to try to collect pawns now. We want to defend because he can move that forward. We can take. He can take. We can take. We want to protect that. I don't know. He might be trying to sneak around to there. I'm not too concerned. This is good. So he's going to have to move that over there if he wants to protect the pawns. Okay. So he's not thinking this uh, as well through as he probably should. And do we have a fantastic tactic here? That is the question. Okay, let's take this pawn here. So already we've really brought this lead forward. Okay, so we're going to play a little trick on him here. Same trick we were looking at earlier. Okay, so we're going to check him. And we're going to put him in a little bit of a windmill. Can we do this? Yep, okay. So this is called a discovered attack. And he's actually going to be in a lot of trouble. So we have this diagonal, and what's in the way? The check, the rook. So let's move it.
and he saw it was coming. Um, it could turn into what's called a windmill, which is very rare. So now that we moved, I'll just show you the game is over here resigned. Um, so he's in check. He can move to here. You can play check again. You can go here, but I'm, I'm fishing around. My position's better. He's going to have, so it's actually not a windmill. I was wrong there. Um, but the position's better. He has these three pawns, but none of them are connected, meaning they're not next to each other. So it's much harder for them to work together. And as I go ahead and take all of the pawns away, um, his chances to win are really diminishing. And, you know, he's falling apart there. So he decided to resign. Totally understandable. But good game to my opponent. Um, I was playing a bit sloppy in the beginning. And just a reminder of that's why you play fundamentally sound chess. Um, but with that, I'm going to conclude the video. I hope this has been educational. So we've gone from about 850 to 900 in rating, and we're going to keep going up. Um, and we're def we've definitely seen an increase in quality of opponent, and we're going to continue to see that as we go up. So again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to see more chess content, subscribe to the channel, like the video. Uh, and if you have anything that you'd like to see, leave a comment below. Uh, let me know your thoughts. So again, appreciate the support, and uh, thanks for watching.